So last time we talked about Faraday's law and saw how, for example, moving a loop in a magnetic field, uh, moving a loop into a magnetic field can create a induced current around that loop. We also saw a kind of different example where we had a stationary loop and a magnetic field on it that was changing in time, and that also was able to induce a current. So when we have a loop moving, we can do some math using our like QV cross B force on the charge, on the charges that make up the loop, and kind of explain what's happening with that. But we can't explain what's happening in that same way when our loop is stationary and our flux is changing because the magnetic field strength is changing. So what is going on there? So that, you know, that picture looked kind of like this. So we have some magnetic field, in this case we'll say it's out of the board, and we have some loop in the magnetic field. And if our magnetic field, let's say we're uh, increasing our magnetic field, right? So that means that the, the, the field is out of the board and getting more strongly out of the board. Lenz's law says that the induced current in this loop is going to be in a direction that makes a magnetic field that will oppose that change. So if the B field is becoming more strongly out of the board, Lenz's law is going to have a current that is going to make a field opposing that, so making a field into the board, which by the right-hand rule is going to be clockwise around the loop. So this changing B field causes this induced current to go clockwise around the loop. And clearly we cannot explain this with QV cross B, right? Our charges here, you know, while they're sitting in the magnetic field, the charges here are stationary, and it's only when we change the magnetic field strength that makes them move, and, you know, if V is zero, <laughs> it doesn't matter if B changes in this equation, the force is still zero. So what is happening, what is happening there? Uh, based on what we know, we could guess that it seems like if, if we're not moving charges because of our magnetic field, maybe it could be because there is an electric field. But we learned that we can only make an electric field uh, with, with you know, charges that make this electric field, and we're not like adding any charges to this, so that doesn't seem like a strong possibility. However, and that's where we, we arrive uh, at the topic of this lecture, you can make an electric field without charges, uh, and that is by changing magnetic field. So it turns out that uh, that you can make an E field with no charge uh, by changing the B field. And um, we'll learn other ways to write this, but basically if we have a picture that looks like this. Let me just erase our loop momentarily. So we have our magnetic field, and we are increasing the strength of this magnetic field. Uh, we end up creating an electric field that kind of wraps around this B field, um, and it, well, we can kind of guess the direction it's going to go. So if B is increasing out of the board, we're going to end up with an electric field that is at various points pointing in this clockwise circle around here. So these are all our E field vectors that are going like this. So if we imagine our metal loop, you know, at these points, the charges in here are going to feel a force clockwise around the wire because of this electric field. So this was kind of a big deal when it was, um, when it was discovered. I think this was, uh, Maxwell who figured this out, who eventually had the electromagnetic equations, Maxwell's equations, named after him. And uh, last time, in the last lecture, I think I made a mistake of calling this E field the displacement field. That was a mistake. I don't know what I was thinking, so disregard that that name. All right. So the you know the thing that that determines if this E field is created is the time derivative of the magnetic field. So if if the magnetic field is constant, if dB dt is zero, we don't get an electric field. So we have to have some dB dt here. And the equation for this E field, we can write 
um, thinking about this as an integral around some loop. So we don't, you know, this doesn't have to be a loop where we have a piece of metal in our magnetic field, although it will, it will also work if we do. So, but this is just, this is not meant to be a piece of wire. This is just some mathematical loop in green that I am drawing. Math loop. And so if we integrate around this loop, so this is a this is now a closed path integral of the electric field dotted with our tangential you know unit vector around this. Um, so that's E dot ds. So this is kind of like what we saw in Ampere's law, um, except Ampere's law was integrating the B field around in a circle like this. So the integral of E dot ds around this circle, uh, this is equal to the area of this loop times the time derivative of the magnetic field, or I should say the, the magnitude of the time derivative of the magnetic field. And this, if we integrate these electric fields over this path, this is almost exactly our definition of the potential, of the electric potential, right? That was integrating the electric field along some path from point A to point B. So this is equal to our EMF around this loop also. Um, so this, this kind of can give you some sense of the relationship between the two. This equation by itself is not um, super useful. It will be more, you know, just our, our equation for uh, the EMF equals, you know, deflux dt. That's that's the one we want to use. But this is just to kind of think about this in terms of this electric field that is being that is being created here. It is a real phenomenon, um, even though there is no, even though it is not being created by any net charge.